Shabbat shalom to all of you. Shabbat shalom. We are in the, we're getting to this parasha, Choptin, judges, um, um, officers. And um, here we are going to see in this parasha that our creator is, is a God of order. He is going to lead us to a society in which we need to have order. Order is very important. Order. And we are going to talk about justice. And talking about justice, also we are going to talk about honesty. And talking about honesty, we are going to talk about leadership. And from leadership to loyalty. And in this process that you're going to see here, the Creator is going to talk in very special way. He's going to use the, uh, the singular instead of use the plural when he talks to us, you, you know? And, and this, uh, uh, it, this is to give us this idea that I hope that we all we can touch. Each one of us is responsible for the whole. You know? Um, you know, we are accustomed to say, I didn't do it. That is not my problem. No? And, and with that, I wash my hands and I blame somebody else. How many times I have been telling you that one of the tools that we have as human beings is about blaming the neighbor, blaming somebody else, or to, to put to others the responsibility instead to look at ourselves. The Creator is going to teach us that when we live in community, the community is starting by the individual. And the individual is part of the whole community. And you are part of the community. You are as responsible as the worst of the worst. You cannot wash your hands and say, well, I didn't do that. I am not like them. You know, I have been in several groups and religious groups, and they love to say that, holier than thou. You know, I am much better than they are, and I am not like them. You know, I say, sorry, but are you live in this community, and you are part of the community, and your silence, your silence is approval of the wrongdoings. You know, you can approve by saying yes, or by not saying anything. You know, there are many people when they go to vote, you know, they say, I won't vote. I don't vote because uh, there is no anything there that, that I like it. You know, well, you are responsible for what is going to come out. Even, even if you say, I didn't vote, you are responsible for the results. Then you need to be uh, always careful. You know, uh, and all these things happen because we have become, instead of be living and understanding the Torah, as the individual is part of the community, we have changed the idea that the community is responsible for the individual. You know, and, and doing that, we have passed all the responsibility to the community. Then I wash my hands. And I expect that the community solve the problems. And I don't take the initiative or I don't participate. When the Creator says, you are going to call, you are going to make in your community, your tribe, your place, you are going to choose judges and you are going to choose officers, policemen. People who are going to execute, you know, the orders. People that are going to supervise the order, you know, among your peers. This is a very important statement because you are going to choose. The question is, who do we choose? You know, the saddest part, even today, in politics and everything else, we do not choose the most capable. We do not choose the most uh, trained. We do not choose the, the person that has the ability and the calling and the desire. We choose whatever is told to us by the manipulation of the, uh, of the media, 
but how much money do you have? You know, or how many know you for certain things? Instead to know you for who you really are. Most of us, sometimes we are selected, no, because for our qualities as a person. We are selected because what supposedly we are known for. You know, if I am a, a, a sport man, you know, that they're very popular today. Or I am a singer or a, an actor. Oh, they are very popular. What? Well, because they're not. But they do not care about the quality of the person. When we choose somebody in certain jobs or leadership, you know, what if we choose the most charismatic instead to, to look at the characteristics of the person? Now, in psychology, they try to, to teach about, uh, uh, they, they are developing in psychology about the areas of helping people to find their aptitude, to find their direction. You know, when I was younger and I was working in the university, I, I used to work with young people to help them to choose their, their careers and to, to, to choose which side to go. And it's very interesting that we do not put attention in our young people about to look about their qualities, you know? We don't see their interests. We don't see about the, what are the intentions or the qualities, and we don't see about their personalities. No, we, we do not have a, 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 an understanding. For example, uh, all of us, we grew up with certain interests. We are not all the same. We have certain interests. No? And then those interests, I need to see what are my attitudes. You know, my attitudes is uh, what I am good about. No? And the next thing is about my own personality. No? How my personality is going to influence in this type of work. The Creator knows us, and He put in us things that are going to help us to, to grow in that area. But many times, as I told you, that most of us, we choose, not according to our likes, not according to our aptitudes, not according to our personality. What if we choose sometimes a career or we choose something? It's about what are we thinking is the best? What is going to bring me more money? Or what is going to make me more popular? Or have a better status? You, you know, me, I have been counseling for many, many years. And counseling, uh, pre-marriage is my area that I, I put a lot of intention there. Why I, I put so much effort in pre-marriage counseling? Because after you are married, I say, it's too late now. You're married, you know? Uh, but uh, before marriage, there are those possibilities to make it better. And sometimes, when I, 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 I see couples, and I say to each other, why do you choose each other? You're so different, so opposite. You know? And many times, we choose not for what is best for the other person. We choose what is the best for me. <laughs> you know? And then I choose not the, the, about that if we are compatible or not. I choose this, what is going to serve me better. You know? And at the end, once you are married, you realize that that's working that way. And each one is working on their own way. The same thing when you choose a career. I wish that we put a little bit of time as a young people, instead to jump to something, to say, what I am interested in? What are my attitudes? What I am good about? It? And what is my personality? For example, if I am a very quiet person, that I don't like to talk with people, do you think you need to 
choose a career that you need to be in front of people. Totally the contrary. Look for something. You, you will be good to work in a laboratory, for example. That you don't need to talk to anybody, only with your, uh, with, with your tubes. You see? But uh, what about if you are a, I am here, you know? And they put you in a laboratory. They really, you make a mess of the laboratory. Um, I can assure you that you never accomplish anything because you are more worried about what the others are saying than what are you are you're looking for. You see? This is what I say, each one has their own thing. Last week in the last blog I, I mentioned this, I, this not, you do not want to have, as the surgeon, the hospital administrator. Because everyone needs to be in the, in the position. How the Creator calls people. You know, we see, for example, in Shemot, Exodus, in chapter 31, 1 to 5, you know, when the, he called Bezalel. And we see that, that he had the Ruach, he had the Hosna, he had the Bina, and he had the Dad. I mean, quality, what it means, the Spirit, the the, uh, the the knowledge, he had the know-how, and he had the interest. It's complete to do the job. We are living in a society that we are more influenced by other people than by ourselves. We're more interested in what other people say than what we really are or what we want to be. You know, we are more worried about what other people are going to think about me than in who am I. And this is why many of the, our young people don't accomplish anything. Because they are too worried about the outside. And they don't put enough inside themselves. And their parents are responsible to build their children in the areas that they are good and strong. To let them know about their qualities. And to show them that they are good in areas that sometimes they themselves don't see themselves good. And they need to be told by somebody else the qualities. Sometimes it's very difficult to see yourself, your own qualities. And you need somebody to support you. The Creator does that for something. And I say, in this parasha, the, the Creator wants justice. Select your dove. This is very important. The individual who looks for justice makes a community that is looking for justice. And a community that looks for justice is a good community. Because one won't allow injustice. Today, we live in a world of only injustice. You know, the most privileged, they have better justice than the less privileged. Today, the true justice system is terrible. Our justice system is based on how much money you have, how much justice are we going to do for you. The very wealthy people, they can afford wonderful lawyers. But what about a poor person? He's already dead and arrived. There are many things like that. Even in the, in the, in the social life and the medicine. You know, in certain places, if you don't have money, you die. You don't have money to buy the, the, uh, the medication. But if you have the money, you can buy it. 
He does justice. And we need to look from that point of view and say to you, oh, the rabbi is becoming a socialist. <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about that. I am talking about responsibility of the community. Because in the Torah they teach you, if you are giving a lot, you need to share. And if you are giving a little, you need to be responsible too. Nobody has no responsibility. The justice and honesty. What does it mean honesty? The judges cannot be bought. You, you know, everybody knows that. You can buy justice today. Everybody knows that. You know, the, the greatest uh, culprits that you can see in, in the news, depending on what position you are and how big you are, nothing happened to you. Why? Because you have wonderful lawyers. A lot of money to back it up. But, what it tells you is there is justice. You have a good justice, you're going to have the doctrine, the officer. And the officers are the ones that supervise, they're going to see around. And they are the, the, the ones that are going to also participate in the leadership of the community. They're going to see who are good, who are not good, what they do and what they don't do. And they're going to come with the leaders. A leader is a person who has the responsibility. You cannot be a leader without responsibility. Today, we have turned around. You know, you can be leader and you don't have any responsibility whatsoever. You break others. And this is the reason that we are in this very, very chaotic political and social situation. And what is the problem there? Why we are like that? Because we have forgotten the moral principle of the Torah. You know, I, I, you must be tired with me repeating over and over again about the morality of society. I'm telling you about that the basic Ten Commandments are everything there to make a, a, a moral society. And the principle it is the care of what is yours and respect what is the neighbor. Has a relationship with the Creator, look at yourself in order to give to others. We are not the center of the universe. The creator is everything who has given us life. And we have life in order to serve others. But most of the time, we spend most of the time serving ourselves. And then we don't have time for others. Israel was going to be the example for all the nations of the world. And look, at, I say, what's going to be? Because the truth of the matter is that Israel has failed tremendously. And to me, I, I say this with a lot of sorrow. But I still, with the failures of Israel, look at Still, with the failures of Israel, is the greatest nation in the world. Has the most high values. But what is the problem with Israel right now? Exactly the beginning of what we want to see here in chapter 17. We want to be like the other nations. You remember I said to you about the personality to um, what the young people trying to imitate others instead of be themselves. 
They are more worried about what other people say about me than who I am really. You see, in the world of the nation, and you ask yourself, why Israel is so attacked by the whole nation and the rest of the nation who are evil, 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 nobody say anything about them. And why in little bitty Israel has such a problem? And the only answer that you can receive, if you want it to believe it or not, is because Israel is above all the other nations. And they are required more from Israel than from any other nation. That's the reason. And who put Israel in that position? The Creator. Now let's go back to the practicality to me the, about this portion of the Torah. I say to you that the Creator worked with individuals to form a community. It's not the opposite. It's not the community that work with the individuals. That's in the mentality of today. The world exists to serve me. That's the mentality of today. It's the philosophical idea of today. You know? From the general to the particular. Many times I've repeated to you this. But what the Torah teaches you? The Torah teaches you from the individual to the whole. Why? Because what the Torah is telling you is that you, Another neighbor, you, but another neighbor, is responsible for the thing that happened. And you would say, well, oh, this is too much for me to take. And you're right. And you try to do it alone. That's the reason that we form communities. And we influence the communities in the right way. Have you been influenced posit positively to other people, to other individuals? Are you a positive influence in your community? Is in your community are you respected to be a person of good morals and good values? Or you are considered a wishy-washy or, or, or worse of the worst. How the community see you? Or you are the type of the invisible person that nobody sees you. I think in this parashah, the Creator is teaching out the four areas that later on are saying the develop in the ideas of the position of what the Mashiach was going to do. You know, the four areas were that he was going to be a judge, he was going to be a king, he was going to be a prophet, and he was going to be a priest. And these four areas, each one had a responsibility of leading the community. The judge was obvious to me, justice that everything is in place. The, the prophet is the one that leads you to the right way. The king is the one that takes care of the administration. And the Kohen is the one that is going to give us the interpretation of the Torah, he's going to teach us the Torah, and he's going to bring us constantly back to God. This one is very important. But let me ask you this question. In which of these four areas do you feel that you belong? Which of these four areas are you participating? Are you for justice? Are 
Are you for leading people to the right way? Are you being administrating things? Or you are teaching the Torah to other people? And you are going to see that all of us, we do all the four jobs in different areas. And what is telling you this? That each one of us has a responsibility, depending which area we are going to. I was listening to a rabbi, and he was talking about halakha. You know, halakha is about the one that our rabbis, they give us and they tell us about the ways of how we are going to uh, live a, a, according to the Torah. And, the, and the, the rabbi has their own interpretation. And to the time, halakha cannot be, uh, a, what we said, a, 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 without flexibility, because time change. The, with the times, you need to give a different understanding. The question is, how much you can change the word of God? And the problem I always see is this. That we don't, make, we don't look at the word of God as a principle. We look at the word of God as written in a, in a stone and cannot be taking out of the stone. Because we become literalists. And we miss the point about what our Creator wanted to give us, what the principle of life. And the principle of life is a relationship with Him, a relationship with ourselves, and a relationship with our neighbors. If you have a good relationship with the Creator, you can have a relationship with yourself. And if you value yourself, you can have a good relationship with your neighbor and tell your neighbor. If you don't have in that line, you become a problem. You become sometimes a, as an obstacle for many things. I have been in communities that we have all these types of different people. The people who come to the community to see what I can get. There are people who come to this community to see, uh, you know, uh, what I can give. And there are people who come to look, to have a relationship with the Creator. And one is not independent of the other. We need to do all together. Because believe me or not, when you come to the community, you give, but also you receive. And to be able to give and to receive it because you are clear with yourself, or at least you have a relationship with yourself. And to have a relationship with yourself, you need to have a relationship with the Creator. And that's what comes, what many times I have repeated, if you remember, from the MA to the home, from the faith, uh, uh, from the Muna, uh, the truth comes from the Muna, um, uh, Muna go to Bitahom, and Bitahom comes to, the, I call it Bitahom is the acting phase. If sometimes people don't know, uh, can got the word trust. You are acting upon what you believe. And then comes the idea about that the Creator make us all of us, give us all of us, the Bechirah Hofshi, what is the free will. What do you mean that? 
that each one of us, without exception, each one of us, we are responsible for our own acts. You know, many times, many times, the religion that they teach you that you are not responsible. Somebody is going to pay for you. You know? You know, and I say to you, you are responsible for your own action. That is the giraffe of chief means responsibility. And responsibility is going to be done through Kavanah. And what is Kavanah? The intention, the thinking, the idea, how you project your idea, how you act upon your idea. The same thing that Emunah and Vitajon is the, the Kavanah is what you think and what you put in action. And when your intentions are correct, everything works in that. And this is what the Creator has given us, the Ten Commandments, what is the moral law of the human being. And what happens when we destroy that morality, or we abstain to follow morality, we become immoral against immorality. And for a period of time, we start thinking what is the best for me and I don't care about others. Or I am who I am and that's my, my, my business. What are you are to tell me what to do? No? And finally, when the society goes so immoral, becomes immoral. Anymore. When they don't have the capability any longer to make decisions because they do not have the idea what is right and what is wrong. And that comes with destruction of society. In this parasha, the Creator says, if you do not stop that immorality of time, Immorality is going to destroy you. In engineering, when we uh, have talked to you about this, about the property of material, we go from the position of elasticity to the position of plasticity. When you are in the position of elasticity, I call it, you are going from morality to immorality. Okay, but when you go, you pass to the plasticity, there is no way of return. And the only thing that is going to happen with plasticity, stretch, 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 until it comes for an engineer in the college, the breaking point. Splash, boom, break it. Now you understand why the creator is talking to us about order in society and re an individual responsibility to the community. Hope that you, you can catch this idea because in this way each one of us, young people, middle-aged people, elderly people, all the ages, doesn't matter what all we are, all of us will have a role to play. No one is exempt for the responsibility of acting and doing what is right. If you are a young, you are a child, as a child, you have the responsibility at home, you have the responsibility with your parents, you have the responsibility with your, in, in your school, and you have the responsibility here uh, in the community. When you are a young person, you have the responsibility with your parents, you have the responsibility in your school, you have the responsibility in, in this community. When you are an adult, the same thing. That has not changed. My question today, my uh, desire for all of us is to say this. I am acting accordingly. I am being a responsible citizen. 
I am trying to do what is my test. I am looking a way not to be self-centered, but to act outside. And you will be surprised how many of us we are already doing it without even knowing that we are doing it. And we will be surprised. Many, some of us, we are still in a very selfish understanding that I am the center of the universe. And this time of the year that we are preparing ourselves now for Yom HaTipuri, it's my desire that all of us we search ourselves. Search me, O God, look within me, and see what is there. And please, show me the areas that I am failing. In that way, I won't keep doing it. 